Hey folks, welcome back to Make It Good. I'm Jason. Since I built this workshop, I've been wanting a bandsaw. Never owned one before, but knowing that I want to get more into woodworking, I understand that this is a good tool to have, and I wanted to get as good of one as I could afford at a fairly limited budget. And when I started shopping for bandsaws, I realized there was a wide range of prices, but most of them in my price range were going to be on the smaller side. And I wanted something I could grow with. So in looking at this, I started with the Porter Cable. This is a 14 inch bandsaw. And from what I had seen on it for the price point, it was reviewed fairly well. And so I decided to kind of look into it a little further and see how I could improve it to make it up to speed with some of the larger, more expensive bandsaws without spending all the larger, more expensive bandsaw money. And so what I did is I bought this and then I bought a riser block, a six inch riser block to give it more cutting capacity to take it from a six inch cutting capacity to a 12 inch cutting capacity. I also wanted to have a fence so that I could make nice straight cuts if I need to. And so putting that together, I was able to get the features of a much more expensive bandsaw for not all that much money. It all came in for under $1,000, well under $1,000. So I'll show you what I did, which kits I bought, and how I put them together. So stick around and we'll get started. This Porter Cable 14 inch bandsaw comes with a one and a half horsepower motor. It's got a nice enclosed base and a dust collection port. And for the price, it came in around 550 bucks at Lowe's. It's comparable in capability and features as some of the more expensive bandsaws. I then called Porter Cable customer service to order the six inch riser block kit. And then went on Amazon to pick up the Craig bandsaw fence. I'm gonna take everything out, make sure everything's there and undamaged. It's all packaged pretty well, so I'm not too worried about it. I'll go ahead and assemble the bandsaw itself and then start working on the add-ons. At about 200 pounds, this thing's pretty unwieldy to get out of this box. I like organizing all my parts ahead of time. Helps with assembly. Put together the base. It's pretty straightforward, just has one door on it, so it all goes together pretty easily. Man, this thing was heavy. Probably be best to do this with two people. Four bolts hold the saw to the base. Pretty simple to install here as well. Then you go ahead and put the dust collection port on and the table trunnion and you're ready to go. Now we can start working on getting this riser block installed. We start by taking off the factory blade. We won't be using this one again. Now we take off the stock blade guard. This is going to be replaced by a longer one that comes with the riser block kit. You have to take the lower door off to get to some of the cover plate screws. Took off the upper cover plate and I wanted to go ahead and unplug it to keep it out of the way. So I took a picture of the wiring with my phone so when I unplugged it I could put it back in the right place. Then I took off the lower plate which exposed the bolt that we needed to replace for the riser block. This is a big nut. It takes a 27 millimeter wrench to get it off. I had to buy one specifically for this install. As you loosen it, Everything kind of comes apart, and then you're able to slide the bolt out and set the upper end of the bandsaw aside. Luckily, I had my workbench really close because it made it a lot easier for getting this taken off and put back on eventually. This metal riser block fits onto the pegs that are on the base of the bandsaw, and then the top of the bandsaw fits right on those. You can see the longer bolt for the riser block kit. And as we put the upper section back on, we just kind of maneuver the bolt into place and tighten it up by hand before we get the wrenches after it. And then we just tighten it right back up. I'm 
Then we work in reverse, put the cover plates back on, and the new longer blade guard. And this thing is now taller. Moving on to the guide post and upper blade guard, do keep in mind right here there is a spring and ball bearing that kind of puts tension on that guide post. And so I'm slowly removing the set screw so that the spring just doesn't come popping out and then I'm using a smaller wrench to pull the spring out. The ball bearing did stay in place. I used my snap ring pliers to get the ring off the top of the guide post and then slowly, slowly lower this down so that the ball bearing, if it happens to roll out, um, doesn't go flying. But it stayed in place. Then we simply transfer over the longer blade guard. And remove the factory guide post. Moving back over to the saw, we'll go ahead and put the guide post in and set the snap ring in place. Then we'll put the set screw and spring back in place and then put the knob back on. Then we'll take our upper guide assembly, make sure everything is as lined up as possible, and then go ahead and tighten that down as well. Now we can finally put on the 16 by 16 inch cast iron table. This thing is beefy. With the riser block in place, this bandsaw now takes a 105 inch blade. I ended up purchasing a quarter inch blade and a half inch blade. We're going to install the quarter inch blade to get started with and get everything all tuned up. Now we'll move on to installing the bandsaw fence. I own quite a few Craig products and I've always been impressed with their quality. And this fence does not disappoint. Some nice heavy aluminum components and I think it's going to do really well. It's nice and solid. Being a universal fence kit, the bolts they provided to put this base on were a bit too long for my saw. So I had to go find some machine screws with the same thread to at least get this thing set up. So you'll see them a little different here. I've since bought the correct bolts for this. The instructions for setting everything up were really easy to follow. Uh, there's a lot of little parts to the carriage here, but they went together pretty well. I did have to grind down the heads of the bolts that go to the blue extrusion piece just because they were a little too thick. I was a little surprised by that, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I just took it to my bench grinder. And from there, it goes into place, nice and solid, and it's a good straight fence. So there it is, the Porter Cable 14 inch bandsaw with a six inch riser block, a Craig fence, brand new blade, and ready to go. So I'm really excited to get started on this. Again, this is my first bandsaw. I've never used one of these before, so there's gonna be a lot of learning on this, but I feel like I've got a great start with the equipment that I've bought here. And I hope that if you're looking for a bandsaw and have a limited budget, this has helped you. So feel free to reach out in the comments with any questions. If you like what you saw today, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel. If you do subscribe, hit that notification button so you know when I post new videos. I appreciate each and every one of you following along. Y'all get out there and make it good. Thanks a lot.